welcome to Wellbeing with Manny in Conversation With. What we hear and what we listen to throughout our day can shape how we feel. If we feed and nourish our soul with wholesome conversations from everyday people, filled with positive stories that people can relate to, we may feel less alone and even inspired. We're all working through our own stuff, and sometimes you need to hear people's failures, successes, and everyday struggles. Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with is talking to everyday people about how they have journeyed life so far with hopefully some amazing take homes and some top tips for you. Thanks for joining us each week for another amazing conversation. It really is all about talking. So think, reach out, talk to somebody. Who will you have a conversation with? Welcome back to Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with, thank you so much for your time today. Today is going to be absolutely gorgeous because we are with the gorgeous Lucielle Cliff. Hi Lucielle, how are you? Hi Manny, I'm really well. How are you my darling? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Happy to be with you here today. Can I have a lovely Me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we, um, before Lucielle introduces herself, what I'd love to say is that Lucielle and I connected over the virtual world, as so many of us have done, um, over lockdown. And for me, it's one of the best friendships that I've created over the last couple of years. And and it's a lovely thing, really, because um, we were just saying before that social media does get a bad rap, doesn't it? And, you know, there are a lot of things about social media that can be really tricky. Um, people just tend to edit the the highlights of their life and put that on as their life show reel but for you know for some of us we make real connections that feel really true and we feel really lifted by those people so that's why I'm so excited to have you here today so yeah just if you meet people online and you don't know whether that's true or not it really is I think it is anyway that's how I absolutely I couldn't agree more yeah um (laughs) so Lucy I'll just tell us a little bit about yourself Okay, well, hi everyone out there listening and watching. I'm Lucy Alcliffe and I'm a musical theatre performer. I'm also a fierce and fabulous Gemini. (laughs) I am a wife, I am a sister, I am an aunt, and I am a when I really need to be a very, very positive and influential soul. Yeah, and that's one of the major reasons that I wanted to get you on to um, the Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with, because I think by just looking at your Twitter posts alone, you you lift other people, you're so positive, and so just having a little dose of that today for our listeners and watchers will be amazing. Um, So I always, you're welcome, I always start with the question, what does wellbeing mean to you? well-being means everything to me i think it helps you mentally as well as physically because whatever's going on in your mind at the time can really impact you physically and well-being i think is very much about your confidence um also in yourself and being true to yourself and promising yourself certain things and actually going through with it so if you say to yourself, right, I'm going to go for a lovely walk today, or I'm going to go for a run, I'm going to go for a, walk, a workout, and then you don't end up doing it, nine times out of 10, you feel a bit awful later in the day, because your body knows, hey, you said you were going to do that, and you didn't do that in the end, so I'm not feeling great. Mm-hmm. Um, well-being helps you, but also helps the people that are around you, so your partner, your family members, your friends, it helps them. If you're in a good mindset, in a good place, because you've been looking after your well-being, mm. they're also going to feel that as well. Mm. They're going to respond to that. Yeah. So I think it's very important in everyday life and not saying that I do what I say I'm going to do every single day, by mm. no means at all, but also it's good to just check in. How am I feeling today? How's my heart feeling? How's my body feeling? What's my mind saying to me? Just checking in with yourself because if you don't, you can 
forget about being present in yourself. And I think that's what well-being very much is about, being present, checking in with yourself, making sure you're okay mm -hmm. and you can get on with your day, you can get on with your week and you can feel like a badass if you're yeah. really connected into your well-being. A badass. Badass. Yeah. I love that. I love that <laughs> level of... Um... You know, a lot of people talk about it in the well-being world as kind of setting intentions for the day. And yes. it's really it's really true, isn't it? Like once you set out what you'd like to do today and what you'd like to achieve, even if they're really small, I don't really believe in, you know, oh, that's just a small thing or that's just a big thing. Whatever it is that you want to do, if you get it done, it's just that sense of fulfillment and satisfaction at the end yes. of the day. Yes, an it? achievement. You've achieved yeah. something that you yeah. promised yourself that you would do. Yeah, small. You we, trust yourself more. Yes, <laughs> yes. We don't trust ourselves enough, do we? Um, mm. yeah, little wins. I call them little wins. I love them. Yeah, whatever. I love you that. A little win. Um, so in terms of um, our industry in the last couple of years has been really, really tricky, and it's been really mm. hard for so many people. Um, if it's okay with you. I'd love to just delve into how the last couple of years have been for you and how that journey has presented itself to you, where you were, what happened, and, and maybe where you are now. Absolutely, of course. So at the start of lockdown, it was just a bit of a shock. Also, before the shock happened, because I think that was the realisation, and then we went into shock. So as soon as we found out that theatres were on lockdown, that recalls finals for, for myself were mm -hmm. going to be postponed slash cancelled for a while, we thought everything's going to be fine in a couple of weeks, everything's going to be open again, and mm -hmm. we're going to be back to where we were, mm -hmm. and everything's going to be fine. I think a lot of people thought that, myself included. And then obviously, as the months went on, and we got closer and close, closer and closer to, you know, winter time. Nothing was open again. That's when we all felt like we were grieving for our industry. I know when I spoke to a lot of my friends in the industry, and myself included, and I'm not ashamed of this at all. Some days I felt so low that I couldn't get out of bed. That I would stay un under the covers for as long as I could, dribbling at Netflix, um, because <laughs> as well as, um, so performing wise, that's that's my job. Also on the other side, just to keep my bill bills coming in um, as when I'm out of um, a show or a job at the time, I do social media marketing and also telemarketing. So I'm a telemarketing manager as well as a social media marketing manager. Now, those industries were also hit because no one was working from their office. Mm -hmm. Everyone was sent home to work from home, to work remotely, which is what I do. But when your job is predominantly speaking to a CEO or a director of a business, you're not gonna get their landline. Um, so for me, a lot of that work disappeared all my clients fell one by one by one i couldn't get universal credit because my husband earned a certain amount during the week but that wasn't still enough for both of us to pay our rent and our bills um and i'm very much that person i need to pay my way i'm not going to sponge off my husband i know we're a partnership yeah but for me i like to pay my way i like to make sure that i'm keeping again what I'm honoring, I'm keeping that, and I'm gonna pay my bills, I'm gonna pay my rent. And it also saves the arguments, you know, because money can make those who love each other argue like cats and dogs, and I don't want that because me and my husband have such a tight, supportive, incredible relationship. So um, I got a job in Sainsbury's for a bit. It was not great. Um, I've worked in retail on and off for years, uh, which hasn't been a problem. However, for me, um, I I started to get incredibly anxious and I suffered a few um, anxiety attacks and panic attacks because people weren't wearing masks. People weren't adhering to that social distancing rule 
inside a shop where everyone's got their hand in your face trying to reach for the cheese reach for the milk it got a bit too much for me so i left that job you know i spoke to my husband i said i'm really not in a good place uh, mentally i'm gonna have to leave this job meaning we're gonna have to rely on your paycheck which killed me i can't even tell you mm. how horrendous i felt with that um and he is so beautiful and so incredible that he said of course i i can't have you feeling like this you know i was in tears i couldn't breathe it was it was quite quite something um so anyway fast forward a couple of months later the government mentioned that outdoor theater could be a thing and because my husband is the producer of the British touring Shakespeare and I've cast for him for the last six years for his plays um, as well as various tours that he's done we contacted a few venues that were up for some outdoor theatre and we performed Two Gentlemen of Verona Shakespeare's Two Gentlemen of Verona at I think it was nine or ten venues during that summer of 2020 mm. which was incredible Amazing. it was absolutely amazing um so you're happy in one sense but you're also feeling guilt mm. that other shows aren't open that your friends aren't on that stage where they love to be so it was a real it was a real knife edge um and it was really tricky to be happy for myself i, I was proud of what we yeah. achieved but part of me still felt so much guilt that my other friends were not doing what I was doing yeah. that, that's mm. just part of my makeup I I feel guilt yeah. and I feel shame very quickly I think it's part of my ancestral line good old Hungarians yeah. and their uh, <laughs> Eastern European ways um as I've learned um so I would say I mean during those two years it was like a roller coaster up and down my emotions were up and down this is exciting no that's terrible this mm. is going to be great no that's awful um I all of us couldn't hug or see our family and friends. I'm a very tactile person. When you meet me, I will squeeze. <laughs> I will just like tickle your nose. I'll stroke your face. I'm very tactile. And for two years, I couldn't do that. Yeah. And that really gutted me too. Then I contracted um, COVID around um, winter time in 2020 and it was one of the worst things I've ever been through in my life. I thought falling down escalators at London Bridge was quite awful, uh, being covered in blood and, uh, you know, smacking my coccyx in. But <laughs> COVID was something else. Um, but it really taught me how to surrender. Mm. I used to be that person who would have to be in control. You know, I would probably wind up all my agents calling them and, and emailing them have you heard anything back what's going on i need feedback i need this i need that i was that person and now looking back apologies to all those agents <laughs> that i worked with um but that's that's who i was and i accept that but nowadays i'm very much what will be will be mm. i know the universe has my back i know my body has got me mm. my what my body went through during that COVID time could could have left me a different person. Yeah. But my body was so strong. It had me through all of that. It supported me. And gosh, I, you know, I, I just couldn't feel, I couldn't feel more grateful mm. for how my body protected me and raised me up and lifted me when I needed it. Mm. It was it was pretty incredible. Mm. Um, I know I'm a resilient person and I know that I'm still gonna be resilient through and through, yeah. but there's gonna be an air of patience. There's gonna be a lot of surrender. Mm. I think what is meant for me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think this is a real key point that so many people have, not just um, with, covid but with other kind of really huge life-changing things that have happened in their life there's a moment where you have to surrender to it you don't have to give into it that's a very different thing no. 
no it's yes. different you have to surrender to it and then that what that does is just allows you to lean into what it is that you need to do at that time you're not going oh well whatever you know like a real give in it's a surrender mm-hmm. it's that i i can lean into you and i know that yes I, can trust. I know you've got me i trust exactly mm. yeah and i i never used to be that person mm. i'd always say oh oh great i've got a cold brilliant well done well done body you've got another cold because you're working in theater ah oh, poor me blah blah, blah. Yeah. whereas when i got covid it was very much okay body I know you've got me. I trust you. Mm. I am going to get through this. Um, so as well as being incredibly ill with um, COVID, because it was quite traumatic, mm. um, we don't need to go through into the details, but um, I lost a huge amount of hair for three to four months. And then during that time, I also lost my voice. Um, I couldn't speak mm. or sing um it was quite terrifying Mm. i there were moments there where i thought oh god okay (laughs) i i feel lost Mm. i'm not myself i lost my identity because i lost a lot of my hair and i lost what makes me me my voice yeah all the singing that i do all the hilarious accents all my impressions that i do you know um my yeah I I very much felt like I'd lost my identity, but luckily with help through people that I met online, like yourself, Mm. I joined communities where we would just talk about what we're going through and we would feel a certain amount of support. Mm. Um, Because obviously people in the industry were mourning and grieving for their shows and their contracts Mm. they were absolutely terrified thinking they're never going to get back on stage again Mm. I wasn't in that place so I couldn't really offload what was going on for me Mm. medically or mentally or Mm. physically because we wouldn't have quite you know been on the same level Mm. That's why I would call my friends and I would listen to them and I would just send them love and send them hilarious gifts. Um, Gifts, not gifts, gifts (laughs) Gifts and gifts. Um, But, you know, I would try and raise them up as much as Mm. I could because I knew how low they were and I hate seeing my friends and family low. It just, it breaks my heart. Um, But what I was going through, not a lot of people could resonate with. Yeah. Of course they couldn't. A couple of my friends who got COVID had a bit of a sniffle, couldn't taste or smell for a couple of days and yeah. others were fine and asymptomatic. So we couldn't have that conversation. Mm. Whereas I joined communities that had been through mm. similar to what I had been through. Um, and we just absolutely supported each other. Mm. I also very much um, found myself in my spiritual element. I've always been quite a spiritual person, but part of that ego has always thought, what are people going to think of you if you do start buying crystals, if you do start meditating, if you're obsessed with affirmations and um, all these types of things, you know, saging the house, smudging crystals, spells, you know, good spells, being basically a a white witch. I was always afraid of what people thought and very much what I went through with COVID and those two years that we've all been through, Mm. it really made me reassess and go, but that's me, I'm spiritual. Mm. So I have to own that and not be afraid of it, not hide it away because I'm doing myself a disservice and my soul a disservice. Mm. So it's been up and down, it's been up and down. Thank you so much for just sharing that so honestly, because, you know, what you said was like so on brand for what I'm trying to do as well. So because you were going through something that was really different to so many other people's experiences around you, what you found yourself doing was finding a community where you could talk to people and talk being the underlying bold highlight Mm. word here. It's having conversations 
talking and getting free of judgment going, free, free of judgment and free of judgment and someone going god I, I didn't know anybody else felt like that I don't feel alone anymore if just one person listens to this and goes god that was me oh god I'm, I'm absolutely not alone no you're absolutely not and that is the key is is you know you finding a community of people you could talk to just yeah. make you feel seen and and it, mm. it, it's a, a support, like you say, a support that you needed. You needed yeah. to be held by anyone, really, mm. who, who felt... Yeah, because my husband, like I said, is incredible. And he also contracted COVID at the same time. Mm. Um, but it didn't affect him the way it did me. He's not asthmatic. I'm slightly asthmatic. But now, because of COVID, I'm fully asthmatic. Mm. Um, so he didn't quite understand what I went through mm. but he saw it yeah so in his mind the poor man was like I don't know what I can do for you yeah he, he just wanted to call the ambulance and I said no because my body's got me yeah I'm going to be okay I've got this but my gosh you know he would go out and get me things that I needed he would go online and find out whether other people have had the same symptoms as me you know because before it was only five symptoms I was ticking about 19 of them yeah during that point um so as much as my husband is so incredibly loving and supportive mm. and my god my angel um he couldn't quite yeah. understand that yeah um but now that I am very much into my spiritual side and I am a spiritual goddess yeah you are my um my husband's very much into it he's yeah. got quite a few crystals love he it. loves meditating with me <laughs> love that. um so he's really that's brought that out of him too yeah. and he didn't need to I said to him you know do you what do you think about this do you think it's a bit woo woo you know and he said no absolutely not the proof is in the pudding yeah it is where you were winter 2020 to now where you are now loose worlds apart yeah and that's from trusting myself trusting my body but also really connecting with my spiritual soul mm. we love your husband let's give him another shout out we love you <laughs> andrew hobbs hello andrew love love you. Love you. you see it's it, it's so interesting he's out on a run at the moment but <laughs> see? he's setting his attention for the day and he's doing it um what a good man um yeah there's quite a few conversations I have with people saying you know as much as you want to involve your your partner your best friend your mom your dad whoever it is that you confide in there's only so much holding up that they can do for you because actually mm. if if they're the only person that you confide in and the only person that you talk to it becomes really heavy for them and that's not to say that he wouldn't, or any of our our loves wouldn't be there for us completely but it becomes overwhelming for them and actually finding a community like you did or even you know anybody who's going through something and struggling reaching out and talking to someone um, I spoke to Mary Birch on the podcast the other the other day who's obviously the lovely industry minds um, I spoke to her a couple of weeks back and I've been meaning to get in contact again but well, she's it, wonderful she's absolutely incredible isn't yeah. she? she she's a counsellor yeah. um and I've always always been that person that said I'm fine yeah I'm okay I don't need this I've I've in the past felt ashamed mm -hmm. to go to therapy to, to speak mm -hmm. out what's what's going on um but actually when I spoke to her a couple of weeks back mm -hmm. and we had the best conversation yeah there were some real shifts there were some real eye-opening moments and I've been meaning to get in contact with her again but also I'm 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 in a good place yeah good things are happening um yeah. everything's improving um yeah. so when I lost my hair my, my incredible mother um sent me some details for a guy in victoria um gary at the um hair loss clinic and i've been on treatment hair treatment since april uh last year mm -hmm. and it's it has cool. grown it is healthy yeah i mean i i never had all of this all of this has just improved yeah. vastly 
my breathing's got better, my urticaria, there's a little bit popping up here as I'm talking because I'm hot. Yeah. Um, so so things things yeah. are getting better. Um, my relationships are getting better. I am being authentically me. Yeah. And things are really starting to ground and just mm. I'm feeling less in limbo than yeah. I was. And a typical Gemini don't like being in limbo. <laughs> She's either up or down. She's yeah. <laughs> not in between. That's that's not a place. So yeah. feeling incredibly grounded and so grateful. Yeah. I'm so grateful for so much. Yeah. And I think it, that's a common theme, isn't it? That we are, we're all actually thinking about where we are right now and, and where it could have been. See, my voice just went there because it felt really emotional to say that. Um, yeah, it does. It, oh, man. <laughs> it does. It, it feels like there's so many people who... Um, do feel grateful and it's good to feel grateful we're not going yes. oh wow look at us everything's amazing it's not that kind of gratitude it's it's grateful for the little things that other people aren't enjoying right now and and mm. and how you know yeah there's some horrific things happened and you've been so open and honest with with all the things that have happened but like you said before it could have been so much worse in the it moment could. that won't help you because it's feeling horrific for you but it could have been. And, and I, I wonder, I just wanted to ask you, where do you think that level of strength comes from within you and that resilience? Where is that something that was instilled with when you were younger? Like, where do you, or have you built it on the way? Interested to know where it comes from. Wow, oh, that's a really good question. Um, I would probably say it comes from being brought up by a very strong Hungarian passionate woman my mm. mother she's incredibly strong and my father who's English he's an incredibly strong-willed person too um I think just being brought up by the both of them they were incredibly resilient with their aspirations their achievements their goals I then just I, I think I just took that on from them mm. so when I was um, growing up and obsessed with theatre, I mean, I, I think I was about four or five years of age when I saw my dad on stage. And apparently my mum said, I tapped her on the shoulder and said, mummy, that's what I'm going to do. I want to do that. Um, so I did all the dance classes, all the drama classes, all the singing classes, all the exams. Every single day after school, I had a rehearsal for either a variety show, a talent competition, a play, a musical. Um, every single day, I just had something to do with theatre. Mm. Um, and I think that resilience was from when you're when you're a kid, you've got so much confidence. You know, you are just a ball of I can do everything and anything and I'm not going to feel regret mm. I'm not going to feel shame I'm not going to feel I mean sadness you fall over you graze your knee you're going to get a bit sad yeah. but I think with something like something you really want to do and you know you can do it you've just got this strength within you that says I can do anything I want and as a child I was very much that child <laughs> my parents say it to this day whatever you wanted to do Luce you did and you achieved and you made sure it happened um and then I think as I got older as well going to college going to auditions I realized that casting wise because I'm five foot ten I've got quite a, m a mature voice I'm usually seen for the older cover roles and unfortunately leaving um, LSNT, I studied at LSNT, um, leaving from there I was far too young so I knew from then there would have to be resilience going forward because even my college said darling you'll make it when you're 30, when you're 32 or 33 and I worked during that time during that time I was waiting to sit into my casting as they say mm -hmm. um and I did some fantastic plays I did some cruise ships I did some operas it was wonderful but the UK tours the West End jobs that I really wanted to do 
I didn't get there for 10 years after graduating at LSMT. And to this day, my friends and my industry colleagues just say you are so resilient and such an inspiration for keeping going all that time for 10 years. And I said, I know I would, I'd get upset. Of course I would. Yeah. And I'd be absolutely gutted to not get those jobs that I really wanted and thought that I could do, but the right thing was going to come at the right time. Yeah. And I knew that. And I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And on the day of me and my husband uh, putting our deposit down for our um, beautiful wedding venue, which was the Globe Theatre on South Bank. Beautiful. There's um, there's like a rooftop almost uh, restaurant called the Swan, um, which is connected to the Globe. And we put our deposit down for that beautiful venue. I got the call there and then that day. You've got Wicked. <sighs> okay. I was like, <laughs> like literally i wow. i remember it like it was yesterday i screamed i swore at my agent i was in tears of joy yeah but i just i couldn't believe it it had finally something had gone okay done there we go well done you've been pushing and pushing and pushing wow since college yeah and you did it yeah. and it was amazing so wow. yes i don't know i do you know what i really wish i would know where the resilience is from but i can only say it's watching my my parents growing up yeah and then being challenged throughout my teens and my early 20s with various mm. things relationships yeah. um that definitely just instilled something in me mm. that i just have to keep going no matter what faces me i've got this and mm. i will come through I love that. Honestly, when you said that, I just got chills through my body. I was like, oh, imagine that all happening on the same day. But that's it. And, and it goes back to what you said as well. You trust and the universe has got your back and you trust. Yes. And, it's, yes. and it will happen. Um, yeah. Which is, oh, oh, my God, I love it. Um, <laughs> you mentioned before, so we're, we're just kind of coming towards the end. And I always like to leave the listeners and the watchers with um, some real top tips. And you did mention before about um, meditation. So what I'd mm. love for your top tips is things that you maybe do that take time for you. So a little bit of self-care, what is, what would be your top tips just for slowing down the pace of fast life? So there's a couple of things I do. Um, and the first one that comes straight to mind is actually going out in nature. Mm. I go for walks in a beautiful woodland um, area that's just a couple of minutes down the road and I just sit on a tree bark somewhere listening to either my favorite song or listening to a podcast about manifestations or about well-being or about spirituality or or anything I love li listening to pod podcasts I listen to them all the time um that is so lovely just to be grounded in nature. Whether the sun's shining or not, it doesn't matter. You can just feel that energy mm. from the ground and from the trees. It's it's absolutely incredible. And you're on your own for a bit. It's so important to just be on your own when you want to give yourself all that self-love mm. and that self-care. It's it it won't work if you're with someone else you're going to get distracted you're going to want to have a conversation um i would also do bath rituals which i love bath rituals are beautiful just find some fantastic bath foams salts bombs um there's some lovely bits and pieces from bath bay they're absolutely incredible uh, via insta they've got a new launch soon with delicious things so i'm looking writing forward to that, that. Down, bath. writing that down Bath Bay, B A E. Oh, nice. Um, there's another one. Uh, they're in Ireland and it's Milk Bath. I think it's Milk Bath, Milk Bath, I E. Um, they're pretty incredible. I always pop some chilled music on, whether mm -hmm. that's empowering, whether that's uh, manifestation playlists that I've sourced myself via itunes or, or spotify um and meditation is best 
in the morning. So as soon as you wake up, pop a meditation session on, get a candle on, light a candle, close out the world and just be with yourself and check in with your body. Mm. Meditation is fantastic for that. Affirmations. Mm. I normally write down three affirmations in the morning, uh, however I'm feeling. So I could say, today's going to be a wonderful day. I'm so grateful for the blue skies. I'm so grateful for this roof over my head. I'm so grateful for my gorgeous sleep that I just had. I'm grateful for my beautiful husband. Um, various things like that. Or the other affirmations would be, I am a queen. I am worthy. I've got this. I am a magical goddess. I manifest everything that comes into my life. The universe has my back. I love me. I am love. I am light. I'm strength. I'm power. I'm magic. I'm fizz. I'm sparkle. I'm glitter. What, whatever just comes up. It's, mm. it's just so lovely. Why shouldn't you say beautiful things about yourself? You say beautiful things about your friends and family all the time. Mm. Why don't you say it to yourself? Because your heart goes, Oh, thank you. That feels <laughs> nice today. And it thanks yeah. you for it. Mm. Um, uh, what else would I do? Yoga pilates stretching yeah. just stretching out and just giving your body a, a beautiful flow where again your heart fizzes and your body thanks you for it mm. i think that's really important um and journaling yeah. so that could be a gratitude journal i've got so many of them <laughs> they're just filled with all the things um <laughs> or you could um journal about some tough things that you're going through mm. because when you read them back you actually think to yourself no because if i look at it at, in a different way it's never as bad as what i think it is mm. so it's really important to do that yeah um, and just and watch what makes you laugh i always say this when you're not feeling well laughter is the best medicine watch i love disney watch your disney watch your musical theater yeah. um watch comedy watch rom-coms if you like a horror watch a horror just anything that you love to do and the final thing is whatever that inner child inside of you is desperate to do do it so when i was younger i used to skate like i, I started skating when i was three apparently as you do in sit cup again <laughs> i started skating at the age of three and then carried on skating pretty much like every weekend, whenever I could find time, I would be on my skates till I was about 16, 17. Mm. Then I had an accident, dislocated both my ankles, Oof. couldn't quite get back on them again and always had that fear of, would I hurt myself again? I bought some a couple of months back and honestly, the feeling, literally yeah. just the light that I feel that comes within and out of me when I'm on my skates is just amazing. Oh, I love so whatever that. you love to do as a kid that you think, oh, I can't do that anymore. You used to paint, uh, you used to draw, you used to sew, um, you used to write poetry, you used to write songs, do it. Because oh. my goodness, your body will just, it will light up. It will be yeah. so, so happy that you did that. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. We are so happy for you and so thankful for all of those tips that you've given us. And I so agree with all of them. Like just for me, journaling is a huge thing. I always write yeah. stuff down in the morning, just getting it out of my head and onto the page. And I love that extra reframing of go back and read it. it and it's mm. never as bad when you go back and read it. I absolutely love that. Um, thank you so much for your time and what I My can't pleasure. wait thank for, you for yours. <laughs> what I can't wait for is seeing you in person and you giving me a squeeze and a tickle on my oh. nose. That's what I can't wait for on a stroke on I'm my gonna tickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you so much. Thank you so much. I love you. A light in our world. Um and, and uh, you, and you, Manny, my goodness me. Thank you, you so angel. Much. Thank you. Thank you for being part of this Wellbeing with Manny community. It really means a lot to me that you can spare some of your precious time to listen to these conversations. 
Please share this episode with anyone you think would benefit from hearing these open and real conversations. And remember, talking is key. Who will you have a conversation with?